what you know all classic psychedelics whether it's psilocybin or lsd or mescaline act on the serotonin 2a receptor the agonist of that receptor and that receptor is kind of spread all throughout your cortex um, and that seems to explain why these drugs act similarly they all act on that receptor and you know i'm not a i'm not really a neuroscientist or a neuroimager so i can kind of parrot to you things that other others have found but one of the um findings from neuroimaging studies is that um psychedelics seem to like reduce activity in what's called the default mode network um, and this is a network of brain regions that is I, th I think it was initially discovered in fmri studies when they were just trying to scan people's brain when they're not doing a task and it turns out that when you're not doing a task your brain is actually still active um, and it's thinking about you know past memories what do i need to make for dinner a lot of self-related um, narrative stuff anyway so one of the findings seems to be that psilocybin breaks the default mode network um, and this this is kind of parallel to research and meditation as well um, which seems to show similar neuroimaging findings um, so subjectively though people seem to feel that you know if you'll let, let me ramble a bit and I'll try to circle back and connect all these. People, um, psychedelics are being studied for a variety of conditions that are, it's like, how could one treatment be useful for depression and for addiction and of various kinds and yada, yada, yada. Existential anxiety, cancer. How, how can one treatment be useful for all of these different things? Um, and, and yet, we, we do have other treatments that are useful for a lot of things, namely psychotherapy. Psychotherapy um, is very effective and in a transdiagnostic way. It's useful for all kinds of stuff. And so I, I kind of, and probably a, a lot of psychedelic researchers sort of think of psychedelics as be acting therapeutically in a, in a manner similar to psychotherapy. In other words, people are having these insight experiences, cathartic experiences, corrective emotional experiences. They're able to see their life in a new way. They're able to see the problems in a new way. They're able to think and act differently. Um, and so it may be that some of those uh, kind of acute effects that you're seeing in neuroimaging studies, for example, um, you know, breaking the default node, mode network, you're, you're kind of scrambling up the normal ways that your brain is processing information. Your uh, the me metaphors used about getting your brain out of the ruts, um, which most psychopathology relates to a kind of mental rut. Depressed people are stuck on negative beliefs, attitudes, worldviews. People with addictions are stuck in certain behavioral patterns, including how they respond to stress, um, OCD, and anxiety disorders. These all kind of relate to sort of stuck attitudes, stuck behaviors, stuck whatever. Um, and so it, that that's one way in which you could maybe link up some of the acute effects that are happening to some of the more objective effects. It's not, 100% clear that's the case, um, but that's, that's one way that it's described. You just can't help yourself, can you?